Hi, it's Mike with Itty Bitty Micro Farm. Today we're going to go over the five best ways we found to prevent mold in your grow space. Number one to take into consideration is your airflow. Airflow is going to include your circulation and ventilation, and we're going to deep dive into these a little bit more. So for circulation, we want to strategically place fans in your grow space. What we found out works best for us is placing a fan at each end of the room, going down the aisles the opposite way. This helps create a great circulation of airflow in the room. It can be a good option for some growers to put fans on each shelf. This is not needed and is very expensive and is just overkill. Now saying that, for arugula for us, we found that putting a small pair of fans on the shelf that the arugula is growing on helps move the air over that canopy as the arugula likes to be a little bit drier and it has helped our grow out tremendously. So you might want to look at that if you're having problems with dampening off of the arugula. But you don't want the fans to blow directly on your microgreens as this can dry them out too fast and having to water multiple times a day or coming in the next morning and they're dying off and hopefully you can save them by watering them but that's not always the case so you want to make sure you don't dry out your microgreens too much so let's talk a little bit about ventilation for grow spaces that can have a vent fan it is really beneficial for your microgreens this is the best option if you can put a vent fan in definitely get a vent fan in as it helps move out your stagnant air and replaces the fresh clean air this is the best way to prevent buildup of mold particles in the air. Vent fans can also build out the moisture of the room so the dehumidifier may not be needed at all. Vent fans can be beneficial to any grow space, but they are definitely beneficial to any grow space that doesn't have good airflow, like a basement, a garage, or any room that doesn't have any windows on it and you don't have fresh air coming in there. So look at that if you don't have good airflow. All right, let's look at the second challenge when preventing mold buildup, humidity. And this is going to be more of a challenge as you grow more microgreens. Microgreens breathe and exhale oxygen and water just like any other plant. So you want to make sure that you have a good way to get rid of that water and the humidity in that room. The more microgreens you grow, the more moisture there's going to be released into the air and humidity into the room. So you have to find a way to get rid of that humidity either with a vent fan or what we're going to talk about here in just a minute. In order to prevent mold, you really want to keep your humidity around 30 to 50 percent. We found out what's best for us is around 35 percent. It's what we set our dehumidifier at is 35. One way to lower the humidity is using the dehumidifier we just talked about. Our event like we talked about before, and that is the best way to go if you can do it. You can see our 100 pint dehumidifier in this picture in the back circled in the red. That is what we've used since we've gone over 20 trays. He's got that dehumidifier and has set it at 35 and it's worked great and we haven't had any issues. They come in a lot of different sizes, so choose what fits best for your grow space and your budget. Uh, the bigger you can get, if you're planning on growing your business, the better. Uh, so that way you don't have to spend money again right away, but whatever your budget is, get one in there and get pulling out that humidity. All right, another way to keep humidity down is by bottom watering your microgreens. This will lessen the amount of water that evaporates into the air as you won't be top watering and it's better for your microgreens to bottom water as well. And one more way to keep the humidity down is to water carefully. As you can see, you do spill water occasionally, but you want to clean that up as soon as possible as you don't want that water evaporating into the air. So make sure that you clean up any spills right away. Don't let that set around. And now in the third way to prevent mold is by controlling your room temperature. The best temperature to keep your germination and growth space at is between 68 and 74 degrees are 20 to 23 degrees Celsius. Why? Mold thrives in warm temperatures. Most mold varieties grow more quickly in higher temperatures. And the temperature range they love the best is between 77 and 86 degrees. So you want to keep that temperature down. Why mold doesn't grow as quickly in cooler temperatures, there is less evaporation and more condensation in your microgreen canopy in the cold, which also can lead to mold. So the best temperature we found is 70 degrees for us, and that's what we keep our room at, is a nice warm 70 degrees year round. And the fourth way you can prevent mold in your microgreens is simply by critically thinking. We all need to be aware of the cleaning and sanitation. You've got to clean and sanitize at all times. Trays need to be cleaned after each use and sanitized at least once a month. What we use is zero tall, but you can use bleach, peroxide, or any high temperature water. Most people don't have a high temperature because you're going to have to have a dishwasher to do it in. You can use any sanitation method that works best for you. Just make sure that you're doing it on a regular basis. Another important part of cleaning and sanitizing is keeping your grow space clean and your equipment clean. We use what we call an SOP, which are standard operating procedures. 
We use a daily checklist to make sure that we take time to clean and sanitize everything on a regular basis. It does not matter if you're one person or if you're a big operation and got multiple people working for you. These are important no matter how big your business is. This keeps you on task. You see them daily and you're going to do the checklist when you see it. So make sure you have some kind of standard operating procedures and our checklist. So you make sure that you're getting this stuff done on a daily basis. It can quickly escape you. Some seeds varieties are more prone to mold as well, depending on your sources and seed lots and soaking methods. Some larger varieties like sunflowers and peas may need to be sanitized during the soaking process. We've also found out that some radish seeds are prone to mold as well. So make sure you check what seed lots you have and make sure you have good quality seeds. We do not currently do this for any of our seeds, but if you do notice a problem, you want to get in there and sanitize that during the soaking process. And then that way you make sure that you're taking care of the mold ahead of time and hopefully prevent them while you're growing the microgreens. The fifth way we found to prevent mold in our microgreens is by evenly spreading out our seeds. This is especially important in smaller varieties. When the seeds are clumped together, it's not enough airflow to prevent the mold particles. So you wanna make sure you spread out your seeds evenly. And you can watch right here in this video. This is how we did it. You can also watch our tray making videos of how we stamp down the soil and make it flat and water the trays ahead of time before you're seeding. This all helps prevent mold. Make sure you spread out your seeds evenly is one of the most important things you can do. All right, I set out to do the top five, which we have done, but I have some bonuses for everyone who stuck around. Lucky you. And if you're getting any value out of this video right now and you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe to our channel. It's free to hit that button and it helps us out a ton and helps us promote more quality content out like this. I really, really appreciate it if you can help us out and subscribe if you're not and hit that notification bell. So let's talk about quality, quality, quality. It is hard to prevent mold if you're buying the wrong supplies. You need to make sure that you're buying quality seeds from reputable sources like True Leaf Market, Mums. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty out in the world as well in other areas. Just make sure you check and make sure you have a reputable supplier of seeds. That is the most important thing you can do. If you don't have good seeds, you're not going to have good products. So. Make sure you have good high quality seeds. And then the next thing, you gotta have high quality soil. All the big growers grow with soil. Soil is the best thing to grow in. I'll make another video about soil later. But you gotta have good quality soil to grow in. What we found best for us is Promix BX. But you have to test out your soils and make sure they're best for you. A Promix HP might be good for you. A Promix All Purpose might be the best for you. Every grow space is different. So make sure that you find the best quality soil for yourself. All right, so a mold prevention video wouldn't be very helpful if we didn't at least talk about what to do when mold does happen. We'll go through this in more detail in another video, but we want to do a short version here on how to treat your mold if you do get it. Step one, you need to make sure that the mold is just not root hairs. And in this picture, you can see the root hairs versus the mold. Now root hairs are going to come from a single root and they look like hairs looking for water. This is good. You want root hairs. That's not a problem. Mold usually looks like a spider web growing across the surface of multiple seeds. This you do not want, and you want to take care of it right away. How are you going to do that? So if we do determine mold, we want to move into treatment right away. Depending on the type of mold, and it's caught early enough, in most cases it can be treated and the tray can be saved. This is why I like watering the microgreens on a daily basis by hand with a hose and you get to touch and fill every tray and you know if it has a problem right away. If you're doing an automatic water system and you don't see that for three days, you have no chance of saving that tray. It's gone. In this way, when you're touching and filling the trays every day, you're going to know if you have a mold problem and catch it early. So, you can usually treat the surface mold with the diluted food grade peroxide, peroxide vinegar mix, or Xerotol, which is what we use. If the mold does take over a section, sometimes you can scoop that affected area out Soil and all, get it all out of there, and then fill the hole with clean soil. Make sure that it's fresh, clean soil. Both are great options in most cases, but I never suggest selling a tray with mold issues. If it is spreading on the tray and in multiple areas, just get rid of the tray, move on, and start over. Remember, preventing mold is key to growing healthy, delicious microgreens and a profitable microgreen business. You do not want to sell bad product to anybody. It is much less expensive to prevent the mold than to have to treat it or worse, lose a tray and income into your business because of a mold problem. So find it early, treat it, take care of it right away. Again, 
I hope you found value in this video. If you did, if you could please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification button. And remember, we do a live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Tuesday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And let us know by commenting below, what do you do to prevent mold in your microgreens? And make sure you check out our farm video, which we'll have right here, or a video recommended to you. We'll see you in the next one.